Hey guys, what's going on? It's another idol. Today we're going to be talking about the Court of Oryx reveal. First of all, let's start off with swords. Bungie went straight into the stream revealing a new exotic solar sword called the Raised Lighter. The sword isn't something that you will find in the wild, the sword is something that you have to earn, and from the trailer we can see that Eris Morn has the crystal-like piece on the hilt of the sword. Eris Morn is going to play an important role in acquiring the sword itself, with a whole questline dedicated to it. Later on in the stream we saw some damage output numbers, and the damage output is just plain ridiculous. These swords can hold a 55 charge with the use of a heavy ammo synth and each swing reduces these charges by 2 and a heavy swing reduces these charges by 5. So there's lots of room to get plenty of use out of these types of weapons. There is a trade off however with this weapon type. Whilst these swords are incredibly powerful you have to get into incredibly close contact. So using these on things like raid tier bosses may require some more coordination as these types of bosses tend to use a ground stomp ability that can kill you in one hit. There are also a few new statistics and attributes that we can see now. The first one is called efficiency and this gives you an indication of how much energy is going to be lost when you land hits. The next new attribute is called defense, which gives you an indication of how much damage reduction you are going to take whilst using the sword in its defensive mode. The last new attribute is called energy. This simply shows you how many charges the sword will have before it has depleted. I don't know about you guys, but I'm totally not worried about using the Yalahorn now. So now to the main event, the Court of Oryx. The Court of Oryx is a player instigated public event on the Dreadnought. To instigate these public events players must find runes and sacrifice them to altars just outside of the court itself. The runes and altars come in three different tiers. These are just tier 1 through to tier 3 and they don't really have any specific names for the tiers. The reciprocal rune will be placed in the tier 1 altar. Tier 1 has a recommended light level of 190, so you'll have a good chance at besting the event if you're around 190 to 200 light. Anything over that and it will probably prove to be a bit too easy for you. To acquire these runes all you have to do is patrol the dreadnought and do the tasks that are dotted around for a chance of them dropping. Once you have placed the rune on the altar you will be summoned into the court. The court itself cannot be entered before a rune is sacrificed otherwise you will take a slow burning damage until you leave the court. Either that or you will die. You can only enter if you've burned a rune or someone else has already instigated an event. If you die whilst inside the arena you have 20 seconds to get back into the arena otherwise you will lose the fight and the event will be over. This is to stop people from going AFK after they have sacrificed runes. So essentially you have to play and there is a maximum of 9 players allowed in the court at any one time. It's also worth noting here that you cannot spam runes by yourself. Once the event is over you will receive a debuff called the Summoner's Exhaustion and this means that you cannot place runes on the altar for a period that the debuff is active. I think the developer in the stream said that it was around 40 seconds long. This gives everyone else a chance of placing runes and getting better loot. If you are the one to place runes onto the altar you will receive slightly better loot than everybody else participating. The debuff discourages people spamming rune sacrifices for this very reason. So with that let's take a look at some of the bosses that were revealed in the reveal stream. Each boss fight has a unique mechanic that you will have to use to be able to damage the boss and we're going to go through them so if you don't want any spoilers stop the video now because we are going to be talking about the bosses and their mechanics. The first boss that we encountered was the Hive Knight Vorlog. His mechanic was quite simple. He would spawn with an elemental shield. Once you take this down, you can damage him, but once his shield regenerates, it will regenerate with a different elemental burn. Pretty simple. Once this fight has finished, you run up to the top of the platform and a chest opens and spits out a few engrams and you gain some reputation. Nothing massive for tier 1 rewards. The second bosses were three wizard, Alzok Dahl, Gornuk Dahl and Zyrok Dahl. This takes a little more coordination and is a classic Romeo and Juliet style boss fight. You have to whittle down each of the bosses health slowly and then kill them all within a short space of time of each other. Otherwise if you have only killed one of them and not the other two, the first one that was killed will respawn. 
The next boss fight was Kraadug and Mengor. These are two knight brothers that have shields over them, which means that they cannot take any damage. The mechanic behind this is you need to lure the brothers next to each other to take their shields down, then you can damage them. Once one of the brothers has been defeated, the shield on the other brother will not regenerate. So overall, the Void Bow will come in handy here to tether these enemies together. The fourth boss that we saw was an ogre called Krugor. His mechanic was that he had a shield that made him immune to damage. To take down his shields, you had to lure one of the many Cursed Thrall over to him, and when they explode near him, they take down his shield. Once his shield is down, you can damage him. His shield will regenerate quite quickly, so you have to repeat the process of shooting Cursed Thralls near him. The last boss was Bracus Haru'usk. This boss is a Taken Centurion. The mechanic here with this boss is also quite simple. He has taken enemies around him, so to damage Bracus, you have to defeat all of the additional enemies before you can do damage to him. Tier 2 is when things start to get a little hairy. You face two of the bosses that you faced in Tier 1 at the same time, so it takes a lot more coordination, but with a large group, it shouldn't be that much difficult. Tier 2 has a recommended light level of 240 light, which is 50 more than Tier 1. Unfortunately, we didn't see any footage of Tier 3, but it is said to be on the level of raid tier bosses. Overall, the concept looks great, and from what we've seen, the gameplay also looks pretty dynamic and a lot more action-packed. Comparing this to something like the Prison of Elders, for example, it seems like this is what Prison should have been closer to. I don't really want to give my overall opinion on this just yet, because I want to play it for myself, so I'm going to be quite indifferent until I actually get to play it. I'm excited to jump in and experience everything the Dreadnought has to offer, as I'm sure most of you are too. So that is all from me today guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon back inside of Destiny.